Hi guys, it's Meredy here and I'm here with you today with the Not Just For Boys Kit Club page kit instructions for our Tropical Vibes kit. And before I start showing you what to do for this layout, I'm gonna go over what you're gonna get in your kit. And the first thing you're gonna get is this flip-flop thicker set by Thickers. These are really cool. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but the edges of these thickers are three different colors. There's a teal, a white, and a pink layer. So they look pretty cool on your layout. So there's that thickers set. And then you're going to get a bow bunny. Oh, I moved everything. A bow bunny lace pack with four different colors of lace. You're going to get a Kelly Creates stamp set, which comes with seven individual stamps. You're going to get a Strawberry Fields Creamies by Inklings, which is a dry little jar of paint. It's dry and we'll add water to activate it and paint. And I'll show you how to do that in the video. And you're gonna get one jar of Not Just For Boys um, Flatback Pearls, the finishing touches that coordinate with this kit. So they're the Tropical Vibes finishing touches. And then you're gonna get some papers here. You're gonna get the P13 Let's Flamingo paper number seven, which has these amazing cut aparts on one side and navy blue polka dots on the other. This Bow Bunny Forever Young Yum paper. You're gonna get this Bow Bunny Double Dot in Aquamarine. And you're gonna get an Echo Park Designer cardstock. Um, it's double-sided cardstock, and it is blue on one side and green on the other. And then you're gonna get two sheets of smooth white cardstock, and that's gonna serve as the base to your layout. Now you're also going to get a sheet of instructions in your kit, and on the back of those instructions is going to be cutting guides, how you cut all these papers down. So you're gonna start off by cutting all the papers down, to the dimensions that are shown in the cutting guide on the back of your instructions. And I'm going to go do that right now and I will be right back to show you how to put this together. Alrighty guys, I'm back and I've cut my papers down to size. And these five pieces of paper are going to represent the five photos on my layout. And I used three by four inch photos, except I trimmed them slightly down on two sides. Um, not even quite a quarter of an inch off of, off of two sides, but a quarter of an inch is an easy measurement. So trim them down to approximately two and three quarters inches by three and three quarters inches, which would be the same as trimming a quarter of an inch off two sides. Um, that's just gonna be easier for matting and measuring purposes when the photos are just a little smaller than three by four. Okay, we're gonna start with the left-hand side of this layout, which has two photos on it. And the first thing that we're going to do is mat those two photos on this blue paper. You can use the green side if you'd prefer, or the blue side. That's the nice thing about this double-sided um, cardstock that has two colors on the back. It's versatile. So you're just gonna mat them on a piece of paper that's basically four by six. So if you wanted, you could cut this to four by six first. That would also work. So four inches by six inches. And you have those matted. And actually, while we've got this out, let's just go ahead and mat the other photos. So there's three of them. They are going to be not um, four inches tall, their photo mat is four inches tall and nine inches wide. So you're gonna go ahead and cut this mat to four by nine. And then we can go ahead and mat those three photos there. I'll do that real quick while we're talking. Sometimes it's just easier to get all of our photos matted at once. And when I have three photos on one mat, I like to put the first photo down and the last photo down and that way I can get the middle photo right in the middle with the same amount of space right there as right there. So we'll do that and we'll put those off to the side. 
So we're working back on this left-hand side of the layout. And you're going to start with one piece of white paper. That's the background of your layout. And then you've got your pictures up here. And then you've got one of these strips and this paper. So the first thing you're gonna do is take this paper, basically adhere it down right here to the bottom corner. That's fairly straightforward. So we can go ahead and adhere that since it sits right in the corner. And then this paper you're going to tear towards you about approximately halfway through the middle. If you don't like tearing papers, you might just wanna cut this with your paper trimmer right down the middle. But you're gonna tear it towards you and then you're going to adhere the solid side with the white showing right there and then this polka dotted side with the white core showing underneath it like that. So when you adhere this first piece, you're gonna want to don't don't make it go all the way to the bottom. Like don't make it all the way flush to the bottom. Leave a little space. That's about a half of a half of an inch of space. And that way this piece can go flush to the bottom, but you can see both pieces. I'm gonna tear off a little bit of this. It's just a little high. I didn't like the way that looked. Okay, I like that better. Okay, and then adhere this one to the bottom of that. Now, before we adhere our photos, we're gonna grab the left-hand side of this layout, or the right-hand side of this layout. Don't adhere the photos yet. So, we are going to take the white piece of background paper and then this piece. And as you can tell, the pattern should match from this to this, but we've got to scooch this a little over. So instead of having this pattern just start right here at the edge, you need to push this, you're gonna trim off a little because the pattern needs to match up in the same place. So basically, you're going to want, see, it's like barely off the edge of the page. So we're gonna trim right here off the edge of the page, which is like, I don't even know, it's not really a measurement. You just are gonna need to line it up and see right where it meets nicely and trim this little bitty edge. It's probably about a quarter of an inch. It's basically to where the chevron point is. So trim that off. And then once you have that trimmed off, trim, okay, I'm gonna turn it back the right direction so you're looking at it correctly. So now this is nice. It looks like one continuous chevron form, okay? But we're gonna need to trim nine inches from here to here. So put that in your paper trimmer at nine inches. This is why I didn't put this in the cutting guides because we cut off that little, this little end piece. So put nine inches here and trim right there. And this is scrap. So now you can go ahead, line your two sides up exactly how they're supposed to be. Put, get some adhesive on this piece and then line it up so it looks like a continuous pattern. And I don't know if you can tell this, to make the pattern be correct, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of white on mine under there, but that's okay because we're gonna cover it with blue paper. So it's okay if you have to scooch this up or down slightly to make it line up exactly. So then we're gonna take this other piece of blue and tear it right down the middle as well, just like we did with the other one. And you wanna keep it in one piece because you're gonna use the back and the front, and then we're gonna adhere this one with a solid blue side showing. So it basically looks just like a continuation of this piece. And then we're going to go on and adhere this one right under it. Um, before I adhere it, I can see that some of this white is really thick. I'm gonna go ahead and tear off some of that white. I don't like it so thick. It's like 
melding with the other piece. So if some of the white looks really thick, you could just tear it off. So to me, that looks a little better. This piece is a little high. Okay, that's garbage. That looks much better to me. So I will go ahead and adhere this onto this side all the way to the bottom. And of course, I kind of did it crooked here. There we go. And then I'm gonna clean up this page. I don't know if it's easy for you to see, but there's a little sliver showing right there. I'm just gonna take a tiny little sliver off the end of this page, and there's a little sliver of white. I'm just gonna trim a tiny little sliver, and I'll be right back after I trim the slivers off. Okay, I've got the little slivers um, cut off. Now we can go ahead and adhere the photos however you would like them. And I did mine at different heights. I thought it looked kind of neat like that. So we'll adhere this piece right here. And then this one up here. And this is essentially the bones of this layout, the background of this layout. And it's pretty plain, as you can see right now, but we are gonna dress it up with all kinds of embellishments. So in your kit, you got a little, um, a little jar of paint called Strawberry Fields. And you're gonna need to add water. It's solid inside, it's hard inside. You're gonna need to add a little bit of water into this paint and let it sit for a few minutes. So I'm gonna go do that really quick. Um, there's water in here, but I leave it sit for a few minutes so that it, um, so that the pigment picks up in the water and it gets mixed up really well. So while that's sitting, I'm going to tell you what to fussy cut off of this sheet of paper. So you are going to fussy cut for the left hand side of this page. You're going to fussy cut this big flamingo. You're going to fussy cut this large leaf. You're gonna fussy cut this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf. You're gonna fussy cut this flower right here, um, this leaf right here, this blue bird and this orange bird, and this leaf up here, and let's see. I believe this flower down here this little flower up here, this little one right here, and there's one more flower here, this little flower down here. So I'm going to go fussy cut all of those, and those are for the left-hand side of the layout, and I will be right back. Okay, I don't really have everything fussy cut. I just kind of like took big, giant cuts, because I do want to tell you what to cut for this side. Um, just so you could get all the fussy cutting done at once. So we're down to these papers and for the right hand side of the layout You're going to want to cut this flamingo this leaf um, This No, this um, Leaf Oh my gosh, I might have to do this with you guys because it's really confusing here. So this leaf right here And then this leaf that's folded in half. And this flamingo. Like I said, I'm just like grabbing these images. I'm not gonna cut them carefully yet because I don't wanna make you watch that on camera. But there are so many similar leaves here that it's hard for me to figure out what they are without actually cutting them. So let's see. This leaf goes here, this leaf goes here. You've got this little one down here. It's folded. That's gonna go in there. 
You've got this little fern looking guy. I'm sorry, there's this is not very exciting to watch, but if you're trying to replicate the layout, there's just a lot of little pieces here. Um, this flower right here, this bigger flower. Let's see here. This little monster leaf. We got this one already. This big monster leaf. It's a big one. There's just a lot of elements in this layout. This video is probably going to be kind of long because there's also some coloring and etc. on here. Okay, this little sprig right there we're going to use. Yeah, this layout was pretty intense. I loved making it. Let's see here. This one. Um, this big, pretty flower. And there's one more flower. Do I see it? Do I see it? Oh, this. This little yellow one. Okay, I think that's it for fussy cutting. So, as you can see, there are still... Oh, and this bird. I almost forgot about the bird. So as you can see, there are still a lot of different flowers and leaves that we do not fussy cut on this sheet. And you don't have to use, obviously, the same ones that I used, but you can. It's up to you. And there's plenty to use on a future layout. So now I'm going to go and really cut these down and nicely fussy cut them. And I will be right back. Alrighty, I have everything fussy cut and what I'm going to do is lay this side of the layout off to the side for now. And we're going to focus on this one. And what I want to do is somewhat lay all of the elements approximately where they're going to be. It doesn't have to be exact, just approximate. Because we're going to come in and stamp in some areas to fill in some open gaps because there was a stamp set in your kit this month. So let's see, that's about, let's concentrate on this top section first. I'm gonna move this up to the side. So as you can see, there are some gaps here, like right up here and right down here and right here that I wanna add some stamps to. So we're going to pull out our set of stamps and do some stamping. So this is the set of stamps and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stamps on this. And I'm just gonna take the first stamp that I'm gonna use, which is this Monstera Leaf stamp. And I'm gonna stamp it first and I'm gonna stamp it in three areas. I'm gonna stamp once up here, once down here, and once over here. But before I stamp it, I want to make sure that you guys use the correct kind of ink. So we're going to be coloring coloring these stamped images in. I'm going to be using Close to My Heart Archival Ink for these because I know that I can come in with my, with my um, markers and color over the inked image and it won't run. So you might want to test your ink versus what you're going to be coloring these in with on a scratch piece of paper to make sure it won't run. So... Um, if you don't have markers that you want to use to color, you can use colored pencils, you can use watercolors, but I'm going to be using, um, Spectrum Noir markers. So I'm going to use Close to My Heart Archival Black Ink, and I'm going to go start that right now. Alrighty, so I've got a little stamp cleaning pad here. I've got some different sized blocks, and I've got my Close to My Heart Archival Ink. And like I said, I'm going to start with this Monstera Leaf 
image right here. Find a block that fits. And I'm going to stamp once right here, once down here, and once over here. And I'm going to kind of move, move. I want to mask off this because I don't want to stamp over my photos. So once right here. And the other one, I wanted it to come off at the corner. And then the third image I'm going to have come off to the side down here. Approximately like that. Okay, now I am going to stamp this image on my paper, on this little scrap paper. And I'm going to fussy cut it out. It doesn't matter that it didn't stamp cleanly. I'm going to fussy cut it out exactly on the line because I want to use this like a mask. And actually, I don't even need that whole stem, I don't think. I just mostly want the leaf. I'm going to use it as a mask. I'll show you what I mean. So that when we layer more and more stamps, they don't stamp and overlap each other and show. So for instance, we are going to add another stamp. I'm gonna keep this as a mask for my photos. We're gonna add another stamp of a flower over here, but I don't want it to overlap on this image. So I'm gonna place this mask that I just cut out right over the image. And then I'm gonna grab the flower stamp, which is this big floral stamp. And I just moved everything, of course. Let's try this again. Let me make a little more space. Okay. So I've got that masked off. So when I stamp this flower, it will not show overlapping here. Do you see what I mean? It stamped the little portion of those leaves onto this. And save this little piece. We're going to use it a lot. So I stamped that flower, and then I want to add a couple more leaves. I'm going to add these leaves. And again, I'm going to cover up the flower. Or the, I'm going to cover up the monstera leaf, the first one that I stamped. So when it overlaps it, it looks like it's behind it. And then I'm going to cut a little one of these on my scratch paper too, because I'm going to need a mask for that stamp as well. And this just makes your layers of stamps look really nice and not overlapping each other and having funky shapes where you stamp one image over the other image. Okay, because I want to stamp the same leaf looking like it's coming from behind that leaf. And I also want to keep this in case it overlaps. So you just kind of hold down your images and Okay. Oh, and then I'm going to stamp that leaf down here again. So I'll put that mask on there. I do want to cover up my photos. I don't want them to get ink on them. So that mask is on there. I'll make this one peek out of the bottom. And then I am going to use this flower a couple of times too. So we've got a little block of each of these. that will fit this flower, yeah. So the first image of this flower that I'm going to stamp, and overlapping there, and then I am gonna stamp this on scratch paper and cut it out so I have a mask of this flower as well. So we've got all of these down. Let's try this. I'm gonna mask this one. I'm gonna mask this guy. 
if I can get him in the right position. There we go. And I'm also going to mask this guy off and I'm gonna stamp one more flower. Oops, I don't wanna move anything. So now this is how this looks, okay? And that's all of the stamping we're gonna do on this side of the page, but do save these masks because we're gonna use them on the other side of the page. And I'm just gonna leave all my stamps here just like this. The next thing that I'm going to do, oh, I wanna stamp one of these images as well, but I'm gonna stamp this big frame on a leftover scrap of this light blue paper that we had, that we matted the pictures on. So let me get a stamp block big enough for that. Okay, I've got a large stamp block here. And I'm just gonna stamp this large block onto the blue paper. Just like that. Okay. And eventually we're gonna fussy cut this out, but for now I'm gonna leave it whole. So next I'm going to get my markers that I want to use to color these. Um, and like I said, I used some Spectrum Noir markers. I used the tri-tip ones. So let me go grab the colors that I used. All right, keep it easy. I just grabbed five different markers to use. I am using light yellow blend, jade green blend, light green blend, dull green blend, and pale pink shades. So if you have the Spectrum Noir uh, Tri-Blend tri -blend Spectrum Noir markers, this is what you'll use. And to just make it easy, I colored all of these big monster leaves the same color, which was dull green blend. And if you already know how to use these markers, you probably will just wanna fast forward through this. If you don't know how to use these markers and have them, you can watch, um, I'm starting with the dark in the very middle, like where I want it to be shaded the darkest. I'm just putting a little bit of the dark color down, coming out of the middle and like where I want it. And then next I'm going to use the lighter medium. So there's dark, medium. And I'm gonna do a little more in medium. And I am not like a very professional marker person. I know there are people that do this way better than I do, um, but this is how I do it. And um, many of us have Copic markers that may be just sitting around, so this is a good time to pull those out. And then I'm gonna get the lightest color, which is the other end. And I'm gonna go over the whole thing in the lightest color because it kind of blends the light and the dark together as well as coloring the light shades. And these don't need to be like perfect looking because there's so many layers and so much color and there's stuff overlapping that as long as you've got some shades in there, lighter and darker, I think it will look great. I would not obsess over trying to color this with, with perfection. I know that there's, you can add highlights and leave parts white, but I'm not even worrying about that. I don't even really know how to do that very well. I just kind of make up how I color. I haven't really watched very many tutorials. Okay, so those are in the dull green blend. And then one of my, two of my little leaves I will do in this jade green blend. I think I'll do this one right here, and it's the same idea, the dark in the middle. Dark down the middle. And then the medium color. That's why I like these markers, because they've got light, medium, and dark in every marker. Um, you can get these on Amazon. They're called Spectrum Noir. Noir. I can't say that word. I don't know how to say that word. Uh, Spectrum Noir, Noir Tri-Blend Markers. And then they've got the light shade. Um, I think on Amazon you can get, there's two different packs of 24. They're two different shade families of 24. 
and I think they're around $100 for the 24. I'm not really sure. I got them for Christmas. I had them in my my Amazon wish list for months and months and months. My husband bought me one set for Christmas. Um, okay, and then this other leaf I'm gonna do in the light green blend. This leaf right here. I will try to link on Amazon in the comments or in the description of this video, I will link what these markers are for anyone that's interested. And then light. And I found it more economical to buy this kind because it's basically like three markers in one. So even though there's 24 markers, it's like getting 72 colors, which I didn't think was very bad. I do not think they're refillable, just so you know. Okay. Now we've got these two, these three flowers, and I colored them all the same color. I kind of started with dark pink in the middle, and just a little tiny bit of it. And then I did light pink next, because there's not a lot of room on these flowers for lots of shades. So I just did the light pink kind of blending, and then I came in with the light yellow blend and I believe I used a little of the dark first. And then I went in at the very end with the yellow, light, the light yellow, the light end. And blended it all together. And you can go back in and add more pink in the middle if you need. I think I didn't put very much pink in these. I'm going to add a little more pink to mine. I think I'm going to use a little of the medium pink because these look very yellow. But like I said, um, I don't feel like you have to be super particular with these because there's so much going on. Oh, I added dark pink. There's so much going on and so many layers in here that you don't need to go crazy trying to be a perfectionist. And these leaves, I'm gonna color just like I did these leaves. I'm gonna do it off camera because you don't need to sit there and watch me color these leaves forever and then I will fussy cut them out. But let's move on to adhering some of these things down. So first we're gonna start in the back and just adhere the back layers down first. So, I know this little guy is going to stick out from there, and this leaf is going to stick up from there, and this flower is going to stick in wedge underneath the picture right there. And then this um, orange bird is going to adhere flat to the back of the layout, kind of overlapping these things. I'm gonna kind of move that a little. All right, and then this little guy is gonna pop up on dimensional adhesive right there, just to give a little um, depth to the layout. So he's gonna pop right about there, and then this guy goes flat to the back here, just kind of sneaks under. And this little guy sneaks under. Just needed a little pop of color in there. And then this little leaf goes about in there. Okay, and this guy pops out there. And this little flower, we're gonna peek him out. All right, so this whole little embellishment cluster of this top corner is done right now. Now we're going to grab our paint. I will do this bottom one next, but we're gonna grab our paint that we got with water and Mix it up real good. And we are gonna gently and quickly 
paint up here. Do not manipulate and get too much paint and water or it's going to warp your page really bad. But I just kind of went around my little images and I let the ends kind of stick out. You can easily slide the brush under these little fussy cut areas too. And I kind of just go as fast and not super wet brush as possible. Otherwise, like I said, your paper will warp badly and it will start pilling and you'll start peel, pulling up the images that you colored. So the faster and the more you're not really focusing, I think the nicer it will look. It will look more random in this little area and this little area. Um, and you can practice this on a scratch piece of paper so you kind of get the feel of using the paint. If you want, get that little area. That's it. Don't keep messing. Keep it modeled like that. And then we're going to take the brush and a pencil or tool to tap it on and tap the little splatters. Okay, that is pretty good for this page. Just adding a couple little splatters. Okay, now the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go off camera to color in this and fussy cut it and then I will come back on camera when I'm adhering this embellishment cluster down. So I will do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got this colored and cut and we're going to do the same exact thing on this side as what we just did on the other side. I'm just going to show you how I adhered everything down. Let me move these pieces over kind of in the right spots. Okay and we'll start with the bottom layer first. And then we'll just work our way up to the top layer. And the very top layer is going to be the flamingo. And I popped him up on dimensional adhesive. Um, you can if you want to. You don't have to. It's up to you. But he is the very top layer of this. And we'll just kind of wedge these things under here. When you look at like each little individual piece at one at a time, it doesn't seem as overwhelming um, as it does when you look at this whole layout put together and it looks like tons and tons of layers. But it's really not that bad when you pick it apart by piece and you're just worrying about getting one piece down. So we're gonna put him up on dimension and then after we do this, we're going to paint the background of this whole section that we just did too. So let me show you. Let me just get a little bit of adhesive on him. And then we'll grab the paintbrush and do this. I really like these little tubs of shimmers paints. Um, they're really handy and easy to work with. Okay, I've got such a mess going on my desk here, but it's because we're about to stamp again on the other side. So let me get this out, mix it up again, and we're gonna do just the same exact thing. Kind of get underneath the layers here. And once again, we're not messing around too much in one place, otherwise the paper will start pilling and going warped real bad. And I even painted over the chevron paper a little. Try not to get too much water on there. Okay. And then again, we're gonna get a little on our brush and tap it 
to make the splatters. And I didn't even bother splattering over here because it's so much going on on the chevron paper. I just did some splatters over there. And then you can add a little journaling in this area if you want or the date or something like that. But we're going to put this page off to the side and we're going to work on the next page right now. Alrighty, so we've got the next page here and we got our markers here still. And we're going to kind of quickly lay out approximately where all of these... Um, little bits and pieces are going to lay there. We've got one in there. We've got this guy. We've got this guy. We've got this leaf coming under there. And then a few little pieces in here. Now, again, we can tell that it's kind of got some empty spaces up here and around over here and a little bit down here. Oh, I almost forgot this. So that's where we're gonna focus our stamping on. And again, we're gonna start with this monstera leaf first. And I'm gonna stamp one right here, and one up here, and one down here, and one down here. So we'll start there with that. Gonna move this stuff out of the way. And then we're gonna do a couple over here. Gonna move these guys out of the way. One right there. And then we're gonna do one coming out right about down there. And once we've got, these are like kind of like the base of our little stamping clusters, we can move all these things off to the side. So next we're going to mask up this one and let's use this leaf next, this leaf shape. So I'll mask off that guy and I'll put this leaf shape coming out right there. Put another one right up here. Put a couple more up here. So we'll do this one first. And then we're going to want to mask that off. And add another one. Like that. Okay, that looks pretty good for those. And now we're going to come in with this big flower. And we're going to mask this off. And we're gonna mask this one off. And we're gonna put the big flower right in this area. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna get the little flower and we're gonna mask this guy off and this guy off. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna put the little flower in this area. these guys off and put another little flower in this area okay now we're gonna go in and color the same way that we colored them on the other page with the same combinations of colors and I will just tell you that I used the dull green blend on the big monster leaves. I use the jade green on this guy and this little guy. I used the light green blend on this one and this one. And then for the flowers, I used the pale pink shades and the yellow, light yellow blend. But I'm not gonna do those all on camera. Again, you can refer back to the beginning of this video. I'm gonna color them the exact same way as I did the ones at the beginning of this video. So I will go color these and I will be right back. Okay, I got those colored and I'm gonna move my markers off to the side because we're pretty much done with those. And then we're gonna start by piling everything back up approximately where it goes so we can start adhering down all these goodies how they go. And, um, the only two things that I put up on dimensional adhesive, I put both the flamingo and the little bird 
I popped both of those up on dimensional adhesive. Everything else is adhered flat to the back of the page. Um, but I liked those both popped up. And okay, I think I've got everything about where it goes. So I'm gonna start with the very back layer, which is this little guy. I'm gonna start it laying down. And just work my way forwards, just concentrating on kind of one leaf at a time. Because like I said, when you try to look at the whole bunch of things, it starts to get overwhelming. So we'll just do one at a time. And... Um... If you, yeah, if you don't have markers like that, do not worry. You can use so many other things. Um, like I said, mentioned earlier, you can use colored pencils or that's probably the most, that would probably be easy and common and everyone probably has a set of colored pencils or can get their hands on a set of colored pencils. So I think if I wasn't using markers, I would either be using colored pencils or you can even use ink, like an ink pad and dip it, dip a little ink blending tool, like the little paintbrush ink blending tools for your ink pad. You can do that and dip it in ink and then brush it on. That would look really nice too. And um, yeah, so if you don't have markers, don't worry. It won't, it will still look just as nice using something else to color in. The stamped images. I would just make sure to test whatever you're using to make sure it doesn't pull the color as you're working with it. So just test it on a scratch piece of paper, whatever ink you want to use with whatever um, coloring medium you want to use so that you don't start smearing the ink all over your layout because that would not be good after all this work to just smear all of the stamped image everywhere. I would probably want to cry. So um, yeah, just test it on the side. And if you make little mistakes in stamping your images, like for instance, this little flower right here didn't get stamped all the way. Well, you can cover it up with something such as that little flower. Or like right here, this little leaf didn't get stamped all the way. At the very end, I'll show you how to fix this at the very end of our layout. But right now, um, we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna pop these up on dimensional adhesive as well. So the next thing that we're going to do is use our paint again, our little paint jar, and come in and paint some things. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. All right, let me move all of these goodies off so we've got a little room here, we're not overwhelmed. I'll clean my stamps off after I'm done making the video to get all this cleared off of our work area. Ah, so much nicer. Okay, so now we've got our jar of paint and our paintbrush. And we're doing this the same exact way. You might need to add a little more water to your paint at this point, especially if it's been sitting a long time like mine has, um, just so it isn't so thick. I'm, I think I'm gonna go add a little water because my paint is very, very thick right now. I'm just gonna put a couple more drops of water and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back and I think this really helped. Yeah, it just needed a little more water in there. It was very, very thick. And it wasn't um, letting me maneuver it very easily. And spread it out very easily. You'll be able to tell when you need to add water because it won't it won't be very malleable. The color will be very vibrant though. So if you want really vibrant color, don't add more water. But I think this is looking great like this. Just gotta get underneath. 
And then the last step on this portion is going to be making the splatters. Just like this. You want your paint, the base paint to be fairly dry before you add your splatters or it might like swallow up the splatters in the wet paint and then you won't be able to see them. But I am living in the desert. It's really dry here and this paint is already pretty much dry. I'm gonna get some of these splatters off of there. I don't really want them on the die cuts so much. Okay. So that is that full mixed media portion and all of the fussy cutting and all of the stamping and coloring that's taken care of. So we're almost done with this layout. The, the next few things that we're going to add is a title because you've got a thicker, a set of thickers here and they're like teal, white, and pink striped on the side. So you can kind of see from the edge um, what they are. And I think I will write, I wrote, I titled my other page Street Art because that was my pictures. It was my son with a bunch of bright street art and it looked really good with these colors. Even though he's a boy, all of the pictures had really bright colors, vibrant colors. I think this layout could look really good with pictures of birds or visits to the zoo where there's flamingos and birds and or rainforest um, if you went on a vacation and you have rainforest pictures these pictures or these supplies and this layout would look amazing with that um, I'm gonna title this layout rainforest so I'm gonna do the word forest first, if I could find my letters. And I'm gonna overlap it slightly on the top of the pictures, just a little bit. F O. And it is gonna end up overlapping a little bit on here, which is totally fine. And if you want, you can put your title on a piece of wax paper or onto a thicker's alignment guide first, so you could kind of move it around and see ESD, and see where you want your title exactly and what you want it to overlap. But I know I want my title right here. So I'm just gonna put it right here. And then I'm gonna put the word rain above it and I'm not starting it in the same place. I'm gonna offset it a little. Um, again, you can lay out your title on a piece of wax paper or something to see if you want to stagger it or not before you just started hearing and these thickers these foam thickers they have pretty good adhesive on them unlike some other thickers maybe chipboard ones they don't adhere so well but the foam thickers seem to adhere really well and the last thing that oh we've got two more things that we're going to add to this layout so you've got this um trim that came with your layout and I'm gonna use a little bit of the light pink. I'm gonna use about this much. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. I'm just gonna use part of it. And I'm going to adhere that um, using Eileen's Tacky Glue because Eileen's Tacky Glue seems to glue fabric fairly well. So let me grab that. So my Eileen's Tacky Glue, I'm just gonna put a little strip, not too heavy. And then I'm also, going to use a little of my adhesive just to kind of tack it into place but the tacky glue is really what's going to hold it into place once it dries okay so there's that and we're going to put another little piece of this i'm going to trim the end where it went over we're gonna put another little piece of this on the other side of the layout as well. But let me finish up this side. So you've also got these finishing touch pearls. And I'm just gonna put a few on my layout. I'm gonna put three right here, three over here, and three down here, kind of in varying sizes. I'm just gonna dump them. And I would probably place them out, make sure you like them before adhering them down. 
but I already kind of know because I've made this layout once before where I want mine exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere them now. And I use three different sizes for each area. Uh, let me get the glue on here. Maybe I use two different sizes. No, I use three different sizes. Um, I think I just used two different sizes on some of these. I varied it up. Just vary the colors and the sizes whoop, to what you want to work with. And that's why I would say kind of lay them out first before you just adhere straight onto your layout. But I am literally copying what I already did once. So that's why I am not really laying them out first. And then we're going to add the same things to the other side of the layout. First, we're going to add um, the pink trim. And then we're going to add the finishing touch pearls to the other side of the layout. So now that this one is done, I'm going to set it off to the side. And I'm going to grab my other layout. And first we will do this. And I only want this one to go about halfway into that picture. So cut it right about there. And I'll put the tacky glue down first. And then below, I'm not, I'm not putting this adhesive on on top of the tacky glue, it's below it. The adhesive is down here, the tacky glue is up there. I think I want to slide this off. I didn't cut it quite short enough. And then I'm going to trim the excess. Okay, and then we can go ahead and adhere. I'm going to put three of these um, flat back finishing touches up here. And I'm going to put three of them down here. And I'm going to put three of them over here. And I'm going to put the final three over here. And then once I get these all on, I am going to put still pictures of this layout after um, at the end of this video. So you can refer to the still pictures. I'll get some close up shots of the close up of these embellishment clusters. So you can refer to them when you're trying to fussy cut and lay out things and layer them. Um, there's also still pictures of this layout on our website um, at notjustforboyskitclub.com. Underneath the listing, this listing is called Tropical Vibes and even when it sells out, we will still have the listing up there in the pictures so you can easily refer back to them. Um, while you're putting this together and then there's also a still photograph of this layout at the bottom of your instructions sheet so you can always refer to that um, yeah, I think that's about it we would love to have you join us over at our Facebook page not just for boys kit club community that's where our design team shares their layout that they made with these same supplies but in a different way so if you don't want to make my layout, but you just love this kit, they'll show you what they made using this kit. And um, we love to see what you make with the kits. So if you wanna share any of your work over there, that is a great place to share your work um, of anything that you made with any of our kits. Cause I love seeing that. Even if it doesn't follow the instructions that I made, it's fine. We just like to see what you make. So I will talk to you later. Let me put both of these up here so you can see what they look like together. Okay, so this is what the layout will look like all together. And again, I'll have still shots at the end of this video. And thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.